Hi everyone, in this video we're going to continue talking about properties of functions. And so in the last video we did these first two objectives, so now we're going to work on um, figuring out if a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. We're going to talk about local and absolute minimum values. And then we'll look at using um, graphing utilities in order to figure out some things about the function. Okay, so let's start with our definitions here for increasing and decreasing our constant functions. And so these are the formal definitions, but I'll reword these for you to help it make sense. But pretty much a function is increasing, a function we're naming f, on some interval if you have two x values, x1 and x2, and if one of the x values, x1 is less than the other x value, x2, then their corresponding y values, f of x1, is less than f of x2. Okay, so let me just reword that again really quick for you because this definition might look a little mathy. So pretty much it says if you have two x's and one is less than the other, so if you're thinking about your x-axis here, let's say this is one of your x values, and then you have another one here, so one of your x values is less than the other one, then the, these are y values. f of x is a y value. So these y values, the one is smaller than the other as well. So this would be f of x1. This would be one of your y values. And then your other y value would have to be bigger based on this definition over here. So your point would look something like that. All right. So that is the formal math definition for an increasing function and what it really looks like. Let me just do it in another color really fast. It's because your function would look like it's going up toward the right. So functions that look like they go up toward the right are considered increasing. Very much the same, but the opposite of that, but the same idea is a decreasing function. So same starting point, one of your x's is less than the other one but then the y values sort of switch. Your first y value is actually bigger than your second y value. Then you have a point here, like, like we'll say with this x and this y, and then your next x gives you a, a smaller y value, like a shorter one down here. And so that function would be decreasing or down to the right. And then a function is constant if for any x, your y value is always the same. So that would be where we have one x here, another x here, and for both of them, we don't go up or down, we stay at the same y value right here. And so that would be a constant function. So increasing, the y values get bigger as the x values get bigger. Decreasing, the y values get smaller as the x values keep getting bigger. And then constant, the y values stay the same the whole time on that interval. So here's some pictures, pretty much of what I was just giving examples of. But this first one, the function is increasing on this interval. So this is the interval right here. We're just saying from here to here. This is the interval that we call i. And it, notice it's going up toward the right. And so the, the y values are getting taller or larger as we pick bigger x values. This one is decreasing on this interval because notice as you pick bigger x values, your y values are actually getting smaller because the corresponding y value is getting smaller. So this one's going down toward the right. And then constant, no matter what x you pick, you're staying at the same height or same y values. So let's try this example. Determine the values of x for which the function is increasing. Also, where is it decreasing? And where is it constant, if anywhere? Okay, so take a look at this function. Notice it goes straight here. This, this part would be constant. So right over here would be constant. And then it goes up toward the right. So this part is going to be increasing. And then it goes down toward the right here, all the way until here. That's decreasing. And it goes up toward the right again. So it's increasing again. So it's increasing in two parts, right here and right here. The y values are getting bigger as our x numbers are getting bigger. It's constant on this part because x is getting bigger, but y is staying the same. 
and then it's decreasing this whole time. It's going down toward the right because we're picking bigger X's, but the Y numbers are getting smaller. Okay, so when determining where the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, use the intervals involving the independent variable. In this case, that's gonna be X. So we just looked at the graph um, and talked about it, but we need to answer the question in terms of the X values. So that's important. We're gonna answer the question about increasing, decreasing, and a constant in terms of X's. Okay, so notice from right here, negative four until right here, negative two. This is where it's constant. So these are the X numbers we're looking at for constant. So for constant function, the, for constant part of the function, X is between negative four and negative two. So that's where we, we want to answer it in terms of X, but we'll use interval notation. So similarly, if we want to answer for increasing and decreasing, we do something um, the same as far as looking at the X numbers. Okay, so we're going to mention it here. So the function is constant between, this is our first X and our second X. Okay, another way to say it, and I think this might make a little bit more sense to you, is to call it like a starting X and a stopping X. So this is where you start having the constant function, and then this is where you stop having the constant function. So you start at negative four, and you go to negative two, and that's constant. And then it's increasing in two places. Remember it was increasing, let's change colors. It was increasing in two places here, and also here, and you want to answer in terms of the x values. So look at your x-axis. It starts increasing when x is negative 2. It stops increasing. It stops going up to the right here when x is 0. It starts increasing again right here when x is 3. And then it stops going up toward the right, stops increasing right here when x is four, okay? So right in between these two x numbers and between these two x numbers, the function is going up toward the right or increasing. And so we answer it in interval notation, so this would be the answer between negative two and zero, and then again from three to four. And then for decreasing, notice that it's just decreasing in that one part right here it's going down to the right here and the x numbers are zero until three so between zero and three between these x numbers here the function goes down to the right the whole time it's decreasing that whole time and so that would be the answer in interval notation and then just a quick reminder we've talked about this in the past but you want to use brackets anytime that you can have um, your function equal the endpoints, so use brackets if you can equal the endpoints. We've talked about this in a previous video. So we use brackets because the endpoints are included. Another way to look at that is because we have our equal bars here, but from the graph it would be because we can include the endpoints on each interval. Next, let's talk about local maximum and minimum values. So maximum and minimums in terms of graphs are the same thing that you think about when you think maximum and minimum in any other context. It's like the highest and lowest. In this case, it's gonna be the Y values, highest and lowest Y values or outputs of your function. So a function has a local max, and this is gonna be a little bit, again, like a mathy definition. If on some interval, your um, Y value, so this is a Y value, is greater than or equal to all the other Y values, okay? And we say for some value of C in that interval, so it's greater than all the other Y values for any other X we plug in. And then we call this the local maximum value of F. And local, we're saying this because um, in just a few minutes we'll talk about absolute, which is slightly different. So local is sort of like, um, think of like a local region. So like in a certain neighborhood or a certain area, it's the highest value, it might not be the highest value on the entire graph 
Uh, but if you think about like a, a neighborhood, it might be like the highest point in that neighborhood. Very similar is the local minimum. It is the lowest point on the graph where all the other y values are either equal to it or bigger than it. So that will be the local minimum of your function. Okay, so here's two examples. This graph here has a local maximum. So in this neighborhood right here, in this area, this is the highest point right there. So that is a local max. And so we would say that the, the maximum value is the y value. So we'd say whatever this y value is, is the maximum. This one here is a local minimum in this neighborhood because right here in this neighborhood, in this little area, this is the lowest point. Okay, so that would be our local max and mins. And so here's this example. The figure shows the graph of our function f. We're going to find a few things. So we're going to find the numbers x, where f, which is our function, has a local max, and then list the local maximum values, and then find the numbers x for our function for any local minimums. Okay, and then we're going to find the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. All right, so the domain for this function is all real numbers, and I just want to mention that really quick, that because there's arrows right here on the graph, it actually keeps going forever to the left and the right. So it's going to go all the way to negative infinity for the x's and all the way to positive infinity. So that's why the domain is all real numbers because you can actually use all of the numbers for x for this function. Okay, so let's just get rid of that real quick. And then we'll talk about the local max and mins. So we have a local max at zero. So notice if you sort of travel along this function and you stop right here in this neighborhood, in this neighborhood right here, you are at the highest point of any other point around. And so that would be a local maximum it's at the x value of 0. So notice it's, this is the x value. x is 0 at that point. The y value is 3, the output of that x value. So in that neighborhood, the local max is 3. So it's the y value. And it happened at x equals 0. So this graph has two local minimum values, or two local minima. And so in this neighborhood, if you're traveling along your function in this neighborhood, this is the lowest point. But then if you keep traveling in this neighborhood, this is the lowest point. So even though this one over here is the lowest on the entire graph, these are both still local minimums because in their immediate neighborhoods, they are the lowest points. And so this one happens when x is negative 2. So that's this. And this one happens when x is 1, and that's this. And so the local minimums are the y values. It's negative 1 when x was negative 2, and 0 when x was 1. Okay, and then the last part was to figure out when the function was increasing and decreasing. This was similar to our last example. Think about when it's going up toward the right. So if you were to travel on this function, just sort of pretend that you were walking along this graph, okay? And if you're walking toward the right, you're going down right here. And if you were still traveling, once you got over here, you'd be going up. So any part of the function that goes up to the right is increasing. So right here, this is increasing. And then again, it would be increasing over here. Okay, so remember how we did the last one you have to answer in terms of x. Okay, so let me erase a few things and then uh, we'll make it more clear what the answer is for this. But we have to answer with x in mind. So notice from negative two until zero. Anywhere in between there, those two x numbers, the graph is going up toward the right. Okay, so that's this part of our interval and then, or that interval, that part of our graph. And then again, we start going up toward the right when x is one. And then notice, you, because there's an arrow on this graph, it's still going up to the right when x is two, when x is three, and four, and five, and six, and so on. 
this graph is going to keep going up toward the right forever. So this is going to go until infinity. So the rest of this answer is starting at 1 all the way to infinity for x. The graph is going to keep increasing or going up toward the right. And so for decreasing, let's go ahead and clear all this up. Decreasing, it's down toward the right. The y values are getting smaller. And so notice it's decreasing here. And it's decreasing again here. Let's start right here. It's decreasing between 0, x is 0, and x is 1. So anywhere in between x is 0 and x is 1, the graph is going down toward the right. Okay, so let's just erase that part. So down toward the right in between these two x numbers. So that's this interval. But then over here, I want to also point out that there's an arrow. So this is going down toward the right, and it stops going down at negative 2. So negative 2 is actually your stopping point. This graph stops decreasing at negative 2, but this arrow here, it would keep going forever, and so this graph is always going to be going down toward the right, all the way coming from negative infinity over here. So all the way from negative infinity, this graph is just going to keep going down to the right all the way until you get to negative 2. So that's why the rest of this answer starts at negative infinity and stops at negative 2. Okay, so let me just rewrite it one more time for you because I want to make sure you understand this. If you focus on just the x-axis, okay, so if you need to, you can even like draw your own x-axis elsewhere off of the graph. So you can say, okay, this is my x-axis. Zero is right here. So my graph is going down between zero and one. That part I can tell. It's going down to the right between zero and one. Okay. And then where else is the graph going down toward the right? So let me just put some more tick marks. And so the, the rest of the graph is going down toward the right. It stops going down at negative two, but it's going down here, negative three going down from here. This, there's an arrow, so the graph would have been going down past that arrow, going down here and here and here. So that is how we end up answering from negative infinity until negative 2. We put a comma in between because this is our starting point and this is our stopping point. And then remember brackets because we can equal that point right there and parentheses whenever you cannot equal the point, and we can't equal negative infinity, so that uh, gets a parenthesis. All right, so now we're ready for this next definition, but now that we understand local maximums, we can actually talk about pretty quickly the difference between absolute maximums. So absolute, the difference is you're not focused on just like a local area, you're focused on the entire graph. Okay, so this is the math definition for it, but pretty much you're thinking about the entire graph. Okay, so on this graph, the highest point on the whole thing, the whole blue graph, is right here. So this is a maximum. It's actually two different kinds of maximums. In this area, this local neighborhood, it's a local max, but it's also the highest point on the whole graph. If you just look at the whole graph, it is both the local and the app absolute maximum value on the whole graph. Right now the minimum values is the lowest points in the neighborhood and so that would be this one here but then it would be the lowest point on the whole graph would make it the absolute minimum. Okay so let's try this example. For the graph of our function find the absolute maximum if they exist also find the local maximums. Okay so notice that the interval has endpoints it's closed, meaning that there's endpoints that have solid dots here from 0 till 5. Okay, so the graph it only exists between 0 and 5. And now the largest value, the highest point, the largest y value happens right here when y is 6. So the absolute max, remember the max and min are the y values, so it is 6. It happens when x is 3. Okay, so the highest point on the entire graph happens when x is 3, and the answer is 6. So that is the absolute max. 
The smallest value on the whole graph is right here, and this is a y value of 2, so that's the absolute min, and it happens when y or x is 5. So the smallest or absolute min is 2, it occurs when x is 5. And so it has, this graph also has a local max and a local min. And I want to explain the local min part um, in a little bit more detail because it is interesting. So the local max is the same as the absolute max, just like the last one that we talked about. So this one was an absolute and a local maximum value. Okay, so one more time, it's in this little neighborhood around this hill point around this hill it's the highest point but then also around the entire graph if we look at the whole graph that is also the highest point on the entire graph that's what makes it absolute and local this graph only has a local min at this point right here okay let me explain why it's not the absolute it's only a local min here because it's in this area, like this valley here, it is the lowest point. So it is a local min, but if you notice, there was a lower point on the graph, and this point is the absolute min. Okay, so what I want to point out, which is a little bit of a tricky part here, is why this point is not also a local min. Okay, because you might think, oh, in this neighborhood, this is a local min, so not a local min. So this is sort of a, um, a side note that's, that needs to be pointed out. So this is not a local min because there's no neighborhood around it. So notice I've been drawing these neighborhoods with circles. If I tried to draw a neighborhood around here, take a look at this, the neighborhood would actually stop because there's no blue graph on the other side of it. Okay, a neighborhood requires that I can come in from the left and the right of the same neighborhood and I can get closer and closer to that point like I can back here. But this one, I can only get close to the point from one direction. So we, we would consider this not a neighborhood. And so you have to have an open neighborhood for it to be a local max or min. So that's a little tricky. That's why it's not a local min. It's only the absolute min here. Okay, for this function, it has a bit of a tricky part. It has a hole when x is 2. So even though we have graph between 1 and 4 on the x-axis, there is a hole because of this open point right here. And so if you notice, that would be the highest point. But because it's a hole, this graph actually has no absolute maximum value. Because even though we would want to pick that point, we can't because it's not really on the graph. And so the minimum still exists. It's this one here. And this is an absolute minimum. It's the absolute lowest point on the graph. And it's 3 for y when x is 1. OK, and then it doesn't have any local uh, maximum or minimums. And so the thing with the local again, let me start with the minimum. This is not a local min because there's no open neighborhood around this point. There's only like half of a neighborhood so we can't choose this as a local min same thing with this one it's not a local min because i can't draw my whole neighborhood around it no open neighborhood and then this is not a local max because even though i can draw a neighborhood around it the point doesn't exist so there's no point right there okay how about this one here so this function has a domain from one to six but not including 1, so really, really close to 1, like 1.01, but not including 1 because it's an open circle. Okay, so there is a hole at 1, 2. So then the largest value on the graph is right over here. So this is our absolute max, which is 3 when x is 6. And then the absolute minimum is 1, and it actually occurs at lots of points. It occurs between um, here and here. So this is a constant part of the function. So everywhere in between here, the lowest y value is happening, at, a, and it's a y value of 1. And so there's actually a ton of points in here, infinitely many. 
So that's why we're going to answer in terms of an interval. We wouldn't want to just say when x is 2, 3, and 4, because we have to consider all the points in between. And there's infinitely many points in, in between here. And so the absolute min is 1, y equals 1, when x is any number between 2 and 4. Okay, so any number in between. We do have a local minimum as well at of 1, so that's the same answer as our absolute min, okay, but no local max. So there is a local min of 1 because we can draw open neighborhoods around these points, these lowest points, but there's no local max because I can't draw an open neighborhood around that point or this point here. I couldn't finish drawing the neighborhood and so there's no local maximums. So this function, our domain, is starting at 0, going all the way to infinity, because this arrow right here, this graph would keep going forever down, and then this would keep going toward infinity if we kept going to the right. Okay, so that's our domain on that one. So this function has a local max of 6, and that is when x is 0. So our y value is zero, uh, 6 when x is 0. There is no absolute min, and also no local min, because this graph actually keeps going down forever, and so it's going to have no like lowest point. And then there's no local max, because again, you can't draw an open neighborhood around this high point. You can only draw like half of your neighborhood, so no local max or min. And now this one here, so think of the domain really quick, it will go from 2 to 6 on this graph, but then we do have some holes in the graph. Right here at the starting point is a hole, and then when x is 3 is also a hole. And so this graph has no absolute max or mins, okay? So the absolute min we would think it would have been right here, but that point doesn't exist, it's a hole, so that's why it's not an absolute min. And then the max, this graph keeps going up. So that's why there's no absolute max, because it actually just keeps going up. And then we do have a local minimum. Okay, there is a local minimum, and it's right here, where I can draw an open neighborhood around this point. So in this open neighborhood, when x is 5, the local max is 3. Sorry, the local min is 3. There is no local max, though, because for two reasons. This one is not a local max because the point doesn't exist, it's a hole, and then there's no local max over here because this just keeps going up forever. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about for this video is the extreme value theorem. And so the, here's what this theorem states, and it says if we have a function that's continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and notice this is closed using brackets, meaning that you can equal the endpoints, then f has an absolute max and an absolute min on that interval. So a few th important things to point out here. A function has to be continuous, pretty much meaning you wouldn't pick up your pen when you were drawing it, so it doesn't have holes or jumps or anything. And then the absolute max or min, it's going to be the highest and lowest points, but it would also be the case if it's a constant function. So let me just show you some possibilities that um, you would see here so that you know like no matter what you choose if it's a continuous function it's going to have a uh, absolute max and min so let me just draw a few different cases here and make sure that you understand this okay and then this is um, a theorem is like an important fact in math and so this is one of the important ones from algebra so let's say that your function does something like this like it goes up and down and then back up and stops here Notice that it's important that it's a closed interval. So it's important that there's these brackets here, that it is a closed interval, because then we know that there's a stopping point and a starting point, okay? And so on this one, I just randomly drew something, and on this one, this would be the absolute max, and then this would be the absolute min, based on my drawing, okay? So you might be thinking, oh, I can draw one where this is not the case, but no matter what you draw, if, you, if it's continuous and you don't pick up your pen, it's going to have a max and min, absolute. So you can do something else. It's going to have something like this. Okay, maybe it goes like this and down and 
up and down and right back here something like that again it's closed so there are endpoints here and so on this one let's just find the ma absolute maximum it looks like there's at least one absolute max it looks like these are both the same highest point so that one has at, um, at least one absolute max it has two of them actually and it has one absolute min way down here okay and then also one more possibility is a constant function so let's say that this is your function on a closed interval then every point is the max and the min so this is the highest point and this is also the lowest point on the whole function so they it still does have a max and min it's the highest and lowest point all of these okay and then one last thing to mention on this theorem is that it does have to be a function and so you might be thinking you can draw something that this doesn't work then it might not be a function if you draw it and, it, and this doesn't um, hold true it's because functions and this is something we've learned in the past a function the graph must pass the vertical line test so the graph passes the I'm going to abbreviate vertical line test so that has to be true so I'll, I'll show you really quick um, this wouldn't be a function so let's say I have this and I do something like like this one here this is not a function it fails the vertical line test and so that one wouldn't work okay so that this theorem wouldn't even hold for that case so it only works for functions every function as long as it's continuous will have an absolute max and min even this constant case where every point is the max and the min Alright, so the last thing here is to go through an example where we're going to use um, technology, so graphing utility. So we're going to use a graphing utility. I'm just going to actually go to the website Desmos to graph this function, negative 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 1. And I want to determine where the function is increasing and decreasing. Okay, so I'll go over to that website in just a moment. But you can use um, any website that does this or I like get graphing calculator and you can trace along the graph and find these high and low points and um, increasing and decreasing okay so you would trace along your curve and you would see this max value and then um, you can use uh, a function on some graphing calculators that tell you where the minimum points are where they occur and pretty much if we can tell the high um, the max and the mins we can tell where it's going to go um, increasing in and decreasing in between those points. Okay, so I just typed in the function into Desmos and so now I have it here and what I want to do is I want to find where the function is decreasing but I, I want to point out um, where it changes to increasing. So notice that it's increasing right in here going up to the right in this section only and it's decreasing the rest of the function. So it's decreasing down here and then down here and so I need to know this part where it switches. So if I just click on this, you can click on points here, but if I click on that, that low point is 0, 1, and then right here this high point is at uh, 1.667, and then the y value is 5.663. So the function is increasing between 0 and 1.667, and it's don't, going down or decreasing everywhere else. So then it would be decreasing from negative infinity until zero because it's all the way from the left it would if I zoom out it's technically coming in from negative infinity if we just go forever to the left so it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero and then it starts decreasing again at 1.667 and it's going to keep going down and down and down forever to the right so from 1.667 until infinity and so that example wanted us to only look between um, negative 3 and 3 and so we can modify this graph a little bit in order just to put those endpoints on okay so all I did here was I changed this to where I only want negative 3 to 3 for my x values and so just to answer based on the way the question was asked so if I zoom way out actually let's see there it is it stops so at negative 3 we're all the way up here at 100 okay so going back so the function in this case would be decreasing from negative 3 until 0 and then decreasing again from 
six, seven, until three. All right, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.